Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have just moved my pottery stuff indoors. So I thought I would take a chance, or take a chance, take the time to share the different spaces I'm using in my basement for pottery to maybe give you some ideas if you're thinking about um, starting a ceramics habit, <laughs> hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is a habit. Uh, it's kind of an addiction. Just like all of the crafty goodness we get ourselves into, all of this art stuff is kind of an addiction, but it's a good addiction. You get those dopamine hits when you learn new things, and that is way better than, uh, than you know, having other substances. Clay, relatively cheap, pretty healthy. Uh, you get to build some upper body strength, which I need, and uh, and you get some fun things. You get to have some fun things when you're done. So uh, without further ado, let's start by spinning the camera around. I'm going to show you the drying area that I made in my office. Here I have two crates just stacked on top of each other. They're dorm storage crates, hanging file folder, milk crate type things. You can get them at Target. They're usually around three or four dollars. There's my radiator and the reason I put the drying rack in here is because um, it's I heat this room and it's a little bit drier especially with the radiator in the winter that dry heat and I saved the racks from my oven when we had to get it replaced because it's just great for making your own drying areas. So you can see here I've got um, just an empty one there but as this dries I do have a bunch of things to bring in here to dry. I can put this on the bottom and stack the other one on top. I'm going to put, um, what is in this one? My goodness. Oh, it's just a piece of clay. I'm like, is that a spider? Uh, so what I do is after things have been trimmed, I bring them in here and just set them in here to dry, not touching each other and trying not to touch the sides. And because there is holes in the, um, in the plastic, it will let air circulate and also air can circulate from the bottom and the top and then if I have some extra things to dry like often I'll have like um, you know something I've just sewed like an ornament or something uh, I can put it on top to dry and I can also put other clay things up there if I want to and it can just hang out in here till it's dry enough to take to the ceramics place where I have my stuff fired. There's just a kind of a long shot there just so you can kind of see those crates stacked up in case it wasn't completely clear before. I might put something underneath there if I am going to use that bottom rack for store it for for drying just so it's not right on the floor where it could um, where there's not going to be a lot of airflow. I, I definitely want airflow on there so I might put a couple like four cans under there or something just to lift it up. So this is the basic area where I'm doing my wheel throwing. Um, I have obviously my wheel here and I have, I'm going to turn this around so I can see what is on the camera face. Uh, so I get the wheel here so I can just kind of sit and I can position myself right over the wheel so I can look down while I'm throwing. And this is a container that like dog bones would come in if you get like marrow bones for your dog. It's really sturdy, thick plastic and nice and low. So, and then what I can do is um, this, I have a bucket for water here. I'm going to tip the camera down so you can see that hopefully. I know, excuse the cement floor. I mean, it's not fancy, but, um, and overnight the water settles. So I can actually scoop up pretty fresh, clean water off the top. And I have a, just a piece of canvas here that I have, I, I took a bunch of canvas and just kind of hemmed it. And then I can set that there. So any water on the bottom of the, um, of the, container isn't going to be sitting on my metal pottery wheel. I put my wheel on bed risers so that it would be a little bit higher because these uh, budget wheels are pretty short and just to get my kind of my my foot up high enough so that I'm resting when I'm throwing I'm resting on my my arm on my leg and not on the side of the splash pan which would cause carpal tunnel. I do have a couple blocks under where my um, my pedal goes. I don't know if that's gonna you can see that there. Uh, I leveled my wheel. I didn't level it when I was out in the shed. I didn't really think it made that much of a difference, but I have to say it is quite a bit easier to center and not have like uneven rims using a leveled wheel. I'm sure somebody that's more experienced wouldn't have a problem at all. So I just used stuff I already had around the house for, um, uh, for working. I have these plywood, these of plywood that is covered with canvas. I use those boards for moving my pottery around and also for wedging my clay, which I do in the room of hoard, which is the big, I use the big bench. Um, these are just some end tables I have. The clay's not going to hurt them. I can clean them. They need to be refinished anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. These are all pieces of uh, canvas I have cut and hemmed. I did a video on that. 
Uh, I've got, um, these are waiting to be trimmed, so they're sitting here. I've got a pot full of my most used tools. And then uh, I, I keep the, the cloths, the canvas cloths in there. And then over here, in this drawer are my tools that I don't use all the time, but it's kind of nice to have them. Let me see, can you see that? So I've just, I, I want to do some hand building too, so I do have some more like hands-on clay tools, but I've got extra trimmers. I have my X-Acto knife in there because I don't really want that out where it's going to get splashed. I kind of just do that if I'm cutting holes or something for projects. Um, then I've got backup tools in there as well. This was just a little side table, like an end table, but I didn't really like it, and but it was really sturdy and well-made, so I figured I would just use it for this. It'll work great, and then I can always clean it up or refinish it if I need to for something else, but why let it go to waste? And it's perfectly sturdy, so why go buy something cheap and, you know, when I could use this, it actually works well. Now, under there, it's pretty dark, but that uh, on the left over there, that is uh, the containers that lettuce comes in, and I have two of them nested together, and that is my slip. So I wipe my, I scrape my hands and my tools on that bucket while I'm working, and so all that like slippy clay goes in there. And then I've got two 25 pound bags of clay, almost 25 pound bags of clay, there to the right, and then I've just got a tail end of some clay and the other bag on top. But um, that way I can reach it when I'm sitting at the wheel, and it's just really handy. I usually will cut off like enough clay for a few mugs and just leave them on the little table there up there where I have pots sitting right now and let them just kind of let them sit while I'm working they don't dry out too much I mean we're in a basement this is not like a really hot dry area and I leave those doors open because it's just really handy for me to reach in there and get what I need last but not least we are back in the room of horde I know OG <laughs> viewers remember this place fondly I'm sure um this is where I used to have my camera and I still do sometimes I still film in here because it's a nice big bench where I can get messy so what I have here is uh, another one of those pieces of plywood that's covered with canvas and I also have a piece of shelf liner and I just set this on the end of my bench that's directly over the um those nine cube cubbies you can get them at walmart or target or home depot and i just set this on top of the mat like this and that way when i am wedging clay i've got this at a great height it's really comfortable for me to kind of use all my leverage to wedge the clay when i have a bunch of like you make something that doesn't come out well but it's too wet to keep using i'll just lay it out here i'll spread it out let it dry for like overnight and then i'll be able to wedge it up and use it again so um i have three of these boards they're really great just for letting clay dry out and also i have the just the hemmed clay uh hemmed canvas and I'll put that like on top and I'll flip it over and just kind of let both sides get aired out. It works out really well and also that's really good for rolling out slabs and other work like that. So um, this area is where I would wedge clay and do some slab building if I needed the space. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the scenes at my pottery hobby situation. Um, I don't plan on doing any pottery tutorials right away uh but if you'd like to see videos i don't know maybe behind the scenes type things me making a pot or something i really feel like the world needs my pottery advice because i am so much a beginner and there's so many wonderful pottery channels on youtube for free that are just like i'm learning from these guys so i don't really feel qualified to give any pottery advice or uh, or lessons, but I actually, I do let my setup's been working really well. I've been working down here all week and, um, it's been working out really well for me. So hopefully these tips can help you eke out a little space if you want to do some pottery at home. Um, and maybe I, I'm pretty lucky. I have all this space I can work with because we have a pretty big basement and I'm already set up for doing art down here anyway. So I'm like, I use a lot of the stuff that I would have for other art practices with my pottery. Like I had the canvas from stretching canvas. So I'm in, my husband does woodworking. So I had the plywood. Um, I just took some scraps and covered them with the canvas and hemmed some extra canvas. So it's like a lot of these things that I have, I already had for like polymer clay work. And I don't think I had to buy anything other than the clay to get going with pottery. Um, like I mentioned, uh, like a couple months ago when I got the pottery wheel, I pretty much had everything about the clay that I would need to do this work. And there's so many things that you can make, uh, DIY tools that you can make that you can use that, um, you have around your house already. So anytime you're starting something new, any sort of new artwork or craft or something like that, think if there's anything from something else you already do that you can cross 
over. You can uh, you could use for both because that's going to save you money. It's going to give you a lot of ideas. Like there's a lot of things I haven't even used with my clay yet that I want to like. I want to use some rubber stamps for texturing. I want to use some of my silicone molds for just adding some little re relief pieces. There's just so much you can do. That's why it's so fun to try something new and be a beginner again at something because you get those dopamine hits of like, wow, I just learned something new. And you don't get that as often when you are kind of getting to the stage where you're mastering your art form and your craft. Those big revelations are few and far between, but they're so common when you're a beginner at something. So there is my advice to be a beginner at something. Maybe it's going to be pottery. Maybe it will be polymer clay. Maybe it will be watercolor painting. Maybe it'll be knit or crochet, whatever it is. Find something to really throw yourself into and try because it's great to be a beginner and have all those like little wins along the way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scenes at my pottery hobby. And thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.